Hi everyone, my name is Lydia and welcome. Today we're going to be drawing and painting Buddha and bamboo. I'll go over the materials that you need to do the painting as well as list those materials in the description box below. In addition, I will have a photo of the finished painting on my Instagram account, Lydia Pangborn Art. If you like or have been inspired by this tutorial, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. So grab your paints, your brushes, and something to stay hydrated and I'll meet you back at the easel. Today I'm going to be working on a 16 by 20 inch stretched and primed canvas. I'm going to be using acrylic paints and the colors on the palette today are quinacridone magenta, cadmium orange medium, cadmium yellow medium, yellow okra, sometimes called yellow oxide, burnt sienna, phthalo blue, and the phthalo blue is in the red shade, and phthalo green, and this phthalo green is in the blue shade, Payne's gray, and titanium white. The brushes I'm going to be using today are a one and a half inch flat brush, a quarter inch filbert brush. You can also use a half inch and even up as big as an inch if you'd like, a small round brush, and I'm going to be using a palette knife for mixing some paints today, a jar of water for rinsing your brushes, a paper towel for drying your brushes or an old cloth, a mister bottle for keeping your paints damp, and something to draw with. I'm gonna be using a piece of kids chalk and white today. And you can always switch up the materials in any way that you'd like, if you want a bigger canvas or a smaller canvas, or if you wanna switch the colors or use different brushes. So I'm gonna start by getting a ground or a base color on my canvas and I'm gonna use titanium white and quinacridone magenta with a little bit of Payne's gray to create a purplish color. So I've got my titanium white and I'm gonna start by pulling over some of my quinacridone magenta. So maybe about a thumb size and then I'm gonna come down here and get a little bit of my Payne's gray and we're gonna mix all those together and see what we come up with. And then it's going to mix quite a bit because I want this to cover my canvas. So I'm just actually scraping across and pressing in to try to mix the colors. So it gives me a nice pinkish color with a hint of this. Payne's Gray has a, has a blue base in it, so I'm going to add a little bit more because I want it to be a little bit more leaning more toward that purpley color. There we go. And this is going to be just the coating to start to get our base color on our canvas just to have a color underneath everything that we're going to be working on today. All right, so I'm liking that. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more because I think I'm gonna need a little more. So again, some titanium white, a little bit more of the quinacridone magenta than I get of the Payne's Gray. And just keep working those together. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. I'm gonna go ahead and try to make sure I get all of the paint off my palette knife so I don't waste any. And I'm starting with my big flat brush and I'm actually gonna go ahead and wet my canvas with this wet brush. And once I get the canvas wet, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dip this brush into my paint 
And I'm just gonna start to work this color all through my canvas. And I'm making just quick X strokes. You can make circles if you want. You can go down and across, just trying to cover the canvas with all of this paint that's on our brush. And I'm not worried if there's spaces that don't get, if the, if there's spaces that I don't get, maybe there's some white showing through the canvas, I'm not gonna worry about it because we are going to be covering this up, but this is just a way to get started. Remember, I'm pressing hard and press down to get all the paint out of the brush and then to start to blend it. Um, it's a lighter pressure on the brush as you blend. So pushing hard, you can get some of that paint out of the brush and then a lighter pressure to get it to blend. And once you have your canvas covered, we are going to rinse this brush out. Okay, so we're back and we're gonna go ahead and do our drawing. I did put this on, but I'm actually gonna walk you through it and make sure your background is completely dry before you try to draw on it. It doesn't work well if it's wet paint. The, the first thing to do is decide what you want your Buddha to look like. And there are plenty of images of Buddhas that you can go reference out on the internet but just be careful not to copy someone's image. There are plenty of websites where you can get stock photos. So um, like iStock photo, um, I think there's one called Pe Pexels, um, Pixabay, I think may now also be iStock as well. Just be aware that if you try to copy something um, directly, it, there may be copyrights to it. So just keep that in mind. I'm actually using uh, I have a garden statue of a Buddha and I took a picture of its head and I'm just using that as a reference and um, I've done a couple of Buddha paintings before so I kind of know where I want to go with it but one thing to think about when you're drawing is to think about what your main feature is so on the Buddha my main feature is going to be the eyes and I, I kind of like to start with the eyes anyway because it just makes paint in the face much more easy once you get the eyes established. I think they're the, one of the most difficult parts to get, especially if you're doing two eyes, which are only doing one today. So since I didn't want my eye direct center, I came down from the top about six and a half inches and I went over about two and a half inches. And if you want to pull your ruler out and measure down six and a half and then go over two and a half, you can do that. And I just put a little marker there to know where I wanted to be. And then I went over about four inches and I put another little marker. And that way I can connect these two lines by a little curved, or I could, I could connect these two dots by this little curved line here. And that is the bottom of my eye. Now I want to create an area where there's gonna be a little bit of shadow underneath the eye and up and around the eye. So what I did is I came down and it's, it's maybe about a quarter of an inch. So I came down below where my dot was on this side and do another little line to match, but I took it out another quarter inch to the side. So from here to here, but on this side, I went over another quarter of an inch. The other thing to think about is when you are lining your face up, and this is um, an approximation, all faces are different, but it's a, it's a way to give yourself an idea of how to keep things in a line. I actually have this little dot and I went up about three inches or so straight up here. So straight above it. And I came down about four 
I think it was about four and three quarters of an inch down this way. You can go as much as five inches if you want a longer nose, or you can go a little shorter, maybe four and a half inches if you want the nose to be shorter. But this dot for the beginning of the eyebrow and this dot for the eye and this dot should be one straight line down. So they're pretty much lined up here. And then what you can do, so you already have established the bottom part of your eye and the little shadow part that you're gonna have. So you can create this arc around the eye. So if you wanna go ahead and create the, the eye itself or the eyelid, you can make a big arc here. If you need a little measurement to know about how big you want your eye to be, this is about two and a half inches from the top, very peak of the eye here down to the bottom just below it. So you can create a little line that curves all the way around to your other little marker there. So that'll help. And then keeping that quarter inch, I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker through here. So when I come up, maybe I start about a quarter inch out, but I go a little higher, then I come back into another quarter inch here to create the outer bridge of the nose. And remember your nose is going to narrow, but then it's gonna come back out. If you can look at your own nose as a reference, and curve back around to that little dot that's about four and three quarters down the way from this point to this point. So if you create some reference points, that really does help. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around and make a little curve for the nostril. Then there's the little part of the nose between the nostril and then the other little nostril. And as you paint, you can start to see where it looks kind of weird and maybe correct it as you paint. And I'm pretty much gonna line this side up with this outer edge of this eye. So when I've already got this dot and I'm gonna come over and just come straight up from here, right to the inside, create a point right to the corner of this eye. I'm going up about two inches or so and it can be maybe about an inch and a half and I'll create the bottom line. Then I'll connect it with another for the eyebrow. Now down here for the lips, you know, you've got to have the little space between the lip and the bottom of the nose. So you want to try to line up the little lip, the center of the lip with that center of the nose. And it's just a little, little M shape, a little curve there and a curve there. And then you're going to come in and just make a little curve here and here. And I just drew this in so I know where my little dark area is. So I just drew a little arc there and a little arc there. And then I want to make sure that I just, we don't see a lot of the nose on this side, but I did draw just a little reference line here so I can remember to put some shadow there. And then I came over about maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch and I drew my little circle and I created another little extra little half circle on the outside of it so I can remember to put my shadow in on that side because everything on this side is going to be brighter. Now to get the, the facial um, part of the Buddha. So we have a reference point here for your outer eye. And if you go over from that outer eye, and that's about a quarter of an inch, and you make a little dot there. So with the Buddha having an elongated earlobe, I decided that I wanted to make another little line, another little reference point about six inches down. So. I did come in just a slight bit. These aren't straight lines because the face is gonna curve in where your little eye area is and then curve back out for the cheekbone. So the earlobe shape is a, it sweeps out, comes back in and makes a longer sweep out at the bottom of the earlobe. So if you wanna start with the ear, you can start just outside that eye, come in, come in Maybe about an inch or so down is where you're going to have a little curve and then it'll curve back out for your cheekbone. Then you can do the same curve in and out for the outer cheek and keep going on around. And I brought mine in about an inch up from the bottom because I do want to create a little neck here. So I just drew a little curve line there. Now from the eye all the way up around the top of the head, I just drew a nice um, big curve around here and that's the top of the head there and I drew a whole bunch of little circles and you can make the hair up here whatever you want you can do a design 
I'm going to be doing some darker areas and then lighter little circle areas for the hair. You can get creative if you want. And I drew just a little shape down here for the chin because I am going to have a little highlight on the chin here. So we're going to go ahead and just work on getting our base coat for our Buddha in. So you are going to need your um, filbert brush. I'm going to put the chalk away and we'll move on to getting him filled in. All right, so we're going to use our filbert brush and I'm going to stick with my quinacridone magenta and my Payne's gray. And I'm going to start by filling in areas that are darker. So if I look at my photo, I have my little shadow here under the eyes and my Buddha's eye is going to be closed. So I'm not going to have the eyes open, but there is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and fill that in because that's going to be dark. And then the eyebrows are darker. And of course the spaces between all of the hair is darker and there's some dark areas down at the lip, a little bit of um, some darkness underneath the eye and a little darkness around where the ear is. So that's why it's good to have a black and white photo because you can see those dark areas really nicely. So I'm gonna start filling those in. So I'm gonna mix up my quinacridone magenta and my Payne's gray. And I want this to be a little darker than the background color I have now. It's the same paint mixture, but just a little bit more Payne's gray. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my white Just mix that in. And I'm gonna use this as my base coat for the dark areas in my Buddha. So we've got the space between the eyebrow here. So I'm just creating, this is gonna help me create my roadmap where I want things to go for Buddha. And then underneath here is going to be a little bit more of a shadow. And I'm just going to put some areas there. And then we've got dark areas between the spaces of the hair. So I'm just going to make little dot motions around my circles. And this is a nice painting to just step away from things that are so structured because he's not really a gonna be a lot of structure. It's gonna be a lot of loose strokes. I'm not looking to do a whole lot of blending. There's gonna be a little blending on the cheek area. And this is just gonna give me an idea where I want my little hair circles to go. And of course, as you're painting, if you feel like you want to adjust me that, and I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little bit of this color underneath each of these circles as well, because there's a little darkness there. And always remember to refer back, this way it's good to have a reference photo for some things because you wanna be able to refer back to that whenever you need it. And then the eyebrow. And I'm going to go right on the tip of my brush to get that point. That's why I have my filbert brush today. And then just fill that in. And get light pressure on the other side. And if you feel like you want to use your small round brush to fill this in, you can. And then the little shadow area on this side of my little circle. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm actually going to pull it out a little bit as though it's reflecting with my finger there. And then little dark areas. So when you come around the edge of the nose, there's a little area here that's gonna be shadow. And then underneath the nose here, this little part here is gonna be in shadow. And the nostrils are gonna be shadowy underneath the nose there. And then on this side, there's gonna be a little area. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off the to the edge here. And let's see, we set the base of the earlobe. And then the 
this little area here for the outer edge of the cheek. A little darker. And then we're going to come down to this area here underneath the chin. That's going to be a darker area. And then this little area here, I'm going to fill this in. We're probably going to be shifting this around a bit as we go. That's kind of the little part in the lip there. We're going to be working with the lips a little bit. And there's even a little bit of some of that on the corner of the lip here. So you can go ahead and put that in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my titanium white and I'm going to add it to this mixture. Same mixture, just added some titanium white. Put a little drip of water in there. It's getting a little dried out. And I'm going to start to fill in, this is my medium color. So I'm just going to start to fill in all of these areas with this medium color. Just so I have them filled in really nice. And that way I can just start to do a little bit more blending here. Along in there. A little bit more blending along in there. And just doing this medium color. I just missed the, I'm putting a little dark back in there. So I'm just going along, putting in this medium color. I'm not worried about where the lightest of lights are at the moment. Just going in and getting this lighter color in here. And not to perfection, just to create a road map. Now I'm going to leave that little circle there for now. I put just a little light area around it. And I'm just going to go in and get around the eye here. Now there is a little bit of a darker area under the lips. So I'm going to come back up and pick up a little bit of the Payne's Gray. And that Quinacridone Magenta and just go up underneath the lip with a little bit more of this darker color for now. There we go. I'm going to come back down and do the lighter color underneath that and just blend that in. of the ear. just a little bit and I'm going to put I'm going to go back and get a little bit more of the darker color again because this is where the eye is going to be closed make a little line there there we go and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a little bit more up of the white of my titanium white a little bit more of the magenta and a little bit less of the paints gray and I'm gonna go in where I think there's gonna be light areas. So there's a little bit more of a light area over on this side. A little bit more of a light area on this part of the eye over here. And 
this is going to be a little lighter there. And then there's going to be some light on this side of the cheek here. Go ahead and fill the lip in. We're going to work with the lip a little differently in just a little bit. Make sure we get that filled in. There's going to be a light right here on this part of the nose and here. I'll go back to my medium. More of that medium color here. There we go. And this is just our roadmap. This isn't the final color. The Buddha is going to be a, a more of a golden copper color. There we go. And then for the for the the little circles here, I'm going to go into this more medium color to get those filled in. Just so we have an idea of where we're going with Buddha. And of course, we're going to be doing different colors with yellows and burnt sienas. I'm just trying to get all my little cool colors in right now as my roadmap of where I want everything to be. And all we're working with is a light, a medium, and a dark of the magenta and the penguins gray mixed together. A little bit more of that dark area pick up a little Payne's Gray and mix it in because I want to go right up under here so I can remember where the shadow is underneath my nose here. Get a little bit of that magenta and just kind of stir that in a little bit. All right, we'll go back over here. So that's going to be lighter. I'm going to put a little light color right in through here. And there's the cheek and the eye and the nose. All right. Down here, there's going to be a little, a little chin highlight. All right. So that gives us a little idea of how we want to get our Buddha in. It's the very beginning stages. Uh, getting the shapes filled out and where we're going with it. So while our Buddha dries, we're going to go ahead and start working on this side of the canvas. So I'm going to rinse this brush out and we're going to go back to our big brush. Okay, so now we're going to be working with our, our larger brush and we're going to work on this side of the canvas to fill in our um, sky or it's just going to be blue, uh, whatever it is that you think it may be. You can do whatever color you want really. But now we have a cohesive look to our painting. So underneath, we won't see all of these colors, but we will know that there's some vibration of them underneath the painting as we move. So I'm gonna mix up um, a fairly pale blue color. I don't want it to be too dark. So I've got my titanium white and my phthalo blue. And I'm gonna come over here and just mix this up and see what I can come up with. And I'm gonna need quite a bit of it. So I'm scraping across, pressing down, getting the paint off my palette knife and just mixing that in. I usually end up with a really messy palette, so I thought I would try to do the beginning stages of this painting this way so you can see me actually mixing the paint in a more organized way. We'll see how far this goes. I'm actually going to go ahead and just take this paint and just wipe it up here. There we go. And my brush is going to be wet. And I'm wiping off the excess. And I'm going to go ahead and get all of my paint in my brush. And I'm just going to come in and just start to sweep this in. And you can leave as much of your underpainting showing as you'd like, or none at all if you don't want. And 
And with this big brush, it goes on pretty fast. I'm gonna come right around the Buddha here and I'm not being too careful with it. I'm just going right around, right around, right around. I am gonna be a little bit more diligent around the ears because we do have some more painting to do. So it's okay if we cut into them a little bit. Down in here, I'm gonna have it just a little bit more, add a little bit more of the phthalo blue in there. So once you have the covers that you like, go ahead and let this dry. You can rinse out your, your big brush. And I'm pretty sure that we are done with this brush completely for this with this painting. So once you have it the way you like it, this is all we're gonna need this bigger brush for. And we're gonna go back to the next step to our, our filbert brush. Okay, so now we're back and I've sketched in some bamboo. Now you don't have to do bamboo if you don't want to. You can do another flower, you can do a lotus flower, you can do maybe a candle, whatever it is that you wanna do in your painting. But I went ahead and all I did was, these are straight lines. So I, I did one bamboo here, straight up, and it goes all the way off the canvas. And I just do, drew two straight lines and you can use a ruler if you need to. I did the same thing with this one, but I didn't take it off the canvas. It stops up in here. And then I have one that's leaning in. And then I decided that I wanted some bamboo shoots to be flowing over. So they're just elongated. So the shape is, you wanna start a little bit away from where you think your stem is gonna be so you can decide where you want your stems. And the stems will grow out of these little pale pieces of the bamboo. And so there's a little area right here on this one. And there's a little bit of a, shoot coming off here. And the shape of these is just, you start a little bit away from your stem and you go out and in and out and come into a point. And you can do as many of those as you want to. I have a group of three down here and then I just have a nice long grouping coming here. I think I might even make this one a little longer. So you can just play with those however you want them, just straight lines. And when you draw your little curved areas here, you want to make sure that they are an open curve, um, almost like a wide U shape. So it curves wide open. That way it'll look like it's round. And I'm going to go ahead and get a base coat for all of this in. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I've got my phthalo blue and I have my phthalo green and my white. So I'm just gonna bring some of this phthalo green over to this area here. I also have a little bit of the cornacridone magenta. And I'm gonna pull in some of my blue. I'm gonna pull in some white. And I'm gonna start with these being a little bit more on the turquoise side for our base coat. I'm gonna add just a little bit of red to that to take it back. And I'm gonna use this for the leaves and the bamboo, just as a base coat. So I'm just gonna come down and just fill all of this in. And I'm gonna go ahead and work so that I'm working around the little shoots because I've decided where I wanted to put those. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and put your bamboo in first and then decide where you want your bamboo shoots to be or where you want the little growth areas to be on the bamboo, you can do that as well. And before I drew this in or sketched it in, I had to make sure my background color was dry so I'm gonna make sure that's completely dry. And that one I took off the canvas all the way up to the top. So there's that one. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other two.
So, so far we've worked with Payne's Gray mixed with some Cronacridone to make a purple color. We used that as our base coat and we filled in our, we made it a little darker with a little more Payne's Gray and filled in our darks and our mediums and a little bit of light color on our Buddha. And now we're working with, and we came back and we did a nice light blue over everything with our white and phthalo blue only. Now we took that phthalo blue, we added phthalo green to it and a little bit of our magenta. And we're just blocking in these bamboo pieces. This one has stopped right about there. Now to distinguish between the bamboo itself and these little shoots, I just added a bit more titanium white to my mix. And I'm just gonna give these a little sweep in and just curving them. And they're not very refined. None of this is really refined right now. Just kind of blocking in, just blocking in the color. And I'm gonna use that same lighter color to get these started, these little leaf shoots from the bamboo. All right, and we'll come back and refine all of those a little more as we go on. So we're gonna still use this brush for the next step. Now we've got a lot of these colors are nice, cool colors. So we're gonna go ahead and start working with some of our different shades of warm colors over on the Buddha. So I'm gonna rinse this brush out, make sure I get all of my blue-green color out of it before we move on. All right, so now we've got all of our cool colors in to establish our painting. I've got, I've wiped all the chalk marks off of my Buddha. So we're gonna go ahead and start working with some warm colors. I've switched out my water so it's nice and fresh so the colors stay crisp. And I've got all my warm colors here, except for the Payne's Gray, not so much warm, but I'm gonna mix up a darker color to start with on the Buddha to give it kind of a, a bronze gold look. So I'm taking my burnt sienna and it's gonna be mostly burnt sienna. And I'm gonna grab some of my yellow okra and mix that in. And then I'm gonna come over here and pick up just a little bit of my cadmium orange. And if you don't have cadmium orange, you could always use some of your quinacridone and yellow and drop it in there. And now I'm gonna come in and I'm going to start to, wherever these dark areas are, I'm going to start to work. And I did wet my brush before I mixed my paint. I'm going to start to work these dark areas in with this darker color. So I'm going to come to the eye area here. And we have a road map. And if some of this purple still shows through, that's okay. That's actually a good thing. 
And I'm just focused now on just the dark colors. Remember there was this dark area down here for the ear. And then we have a little bit of a dark edge here and underneath the chin. And the nostrils here. So anywhere you see your dark colors, we're going to drop some of this in. And if you don't, if you don't cover all the purple that's there, that's great. Having some of it show through is actually a nice thing. It gives it some depth. This one I'm using my filbert brush so I can get into some of these little smaller areas. And I'm actually going to add a little bit more of just the burnt sienna down under here, just a little bit darker there. And then we got a dark areas for the eyebrow. So now what I want to do is I'm going to come up where I have these little dark areas between the hair. I'm just going to start to hit this around a little bit. And I'm just tapping in, just like I did before, when I put the purple in. And I don't have to cover up all of that purple. And I got this little circle right there. I'm gonna add a little bit more burnt sienna to that. Get my brush a little bit. And I'm just gonna blend that out a little bit. I want that to be a little bit more. I'm gonna pick up just burnt sienna. Kind of just put that around that area there and then I'm going to take my pinky and just pull that out and we'll play with that we'll work on that a little bit more with the lighter colors in just a little bit so that gives it that feeling that it's coming out at us and then down in the very bottom here where the neck is I'm going to do just burnt sienna because it's very dark down here and there is a little bit of that mixture on my brush, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just add mostly burnt sienna here. I'm gonna take the same color that I'm working with. I'm gonna pull in a little more burnt sienna and a little bit more of the yellow ochre. And this time I'm gonna add just a little more of the yellow ochre to that mix. And I can pull in a little bit of that orange and I'm going to, this time to that mix, add a little bit more of the white. And then I'm going to have a little area down here of just the yellow okra. So what I want to do is I'm going to take just the yellow okra now and I'm going to come around and I'm going to find places that are more medium in color. I'm going to add a little white to that. There we go. And I am just, 
I'm not blending it. I'm not um, trying to make it look smooth right now. I'm just putting in this yellow okra. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit more burnt sienna to that yellow okra. There we go, just a little bit. Get some water on my brush. So it's mostly yellow okra. I did add a little bit of the burnt sienna. I feel like I lost my little line right there. I want that to be that little dark line here on the edge and then just blend that in. There we go. And I'm just keeping my eye on more of the medium colors right now. Mostly yellow okra with a little dot of the burnt sienna in. And so I'm gonna bring that up to the ear. Fill that in. And I still wanna try to keep that line there that that's on the face, it, not the whole line, but at least an, an idea that that line is still there. Then I'm gonna take this color, it's still the yellow ochre, a little bit of the burnt sienna. I'm gonna come back to this lighter color in just a minute. And I'm just gonna to start to swirl this color in to the insides of my dark areas that I just made. And this is where I can start to recreate any of those circles I felt like I may have lost. And I'm going to take this color here. And start to work that in a little bit. And I'm still going to keep that little line, that little shadow line that's just on the edge of my nose. But I'm going to come up and just blend it a little bit more with this darker color up here. That's underneath the eye. And we can go back and put any of that in if we feel like we lost it. But I think that's looking good. And I'm going to angle this up this way. There we go. And then this is going to be more of a medium color through here. So we have our little road map and we're just working on following that and I'm just we got the dark and now we're working to in that medium color. And if you want to scumble, you can scumble. If you just want to paint straight, just to fill it in, you can. We're just pretty much just filling in our darks and lights again. And I'm gonna, once I have a little bit of the paint off my brush, I'm gonna, I wanna keep the little dark area up along the edge of the hair, but I'm just going to work to, got a little bit of that. I don't want it that light yet. We're not really ready to go into our lightest of lights yet, but I do wanna blend this out because we're gonna be bringing some of those lighter colors up under in here, because this side of the face is gonna get a little bit more of a light. And I'm gonna define that cheek area. And I think the edge of the eye over here and over here, 
Maybe a little dark. And when I'm doing the eye, I'm going to fill it in with this medium color, but I'm going to do a little curved shape up at the bottom of it, and then I'll bring it around the other way at the top just to fill that in. And I'm going to go ahead and take this medium color and I'm just going to start to fill in the mouth, the lips with it. I'm trying to redefine my little lip area there. And then up under here, we're going to still have it a little darker under here up under the nose get a little bit more of that burnt sienna so this is the under the nose darkness here and we're going to define the lips a little bit more with the lighter color so we'll know where they are in just a little bit and then over here do more of this medium color Here, add some of that down there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do my white, like I did earlier, yellow okra, and just a little bit of the burnt sienna. So it's less burnt sienna, mostly yellow okra, and titanium white. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little touch of the orange in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and start filling in the areas that I think may be a little lighter through here. And this is where you may want to have a clean finger because you may want to do a little bit of blending here. So I put my finger in the water and just blended that a little bit. You can always have a, an extra little brush on the side if you want. It's just always kind of fun to get your fingers in there if you'd like. There you go. And then I'm going to Go ahead and work that in through there. And that lightness will come up over here. Then I can go back in and pick up a little bit of the burnt sienna, the darker color, and just start to work that in to that area. Here we go. And I'm gonna put little highlights on the edge and the top part of the ear here. And then I'm going to blend that down. And I'm just bringing that down and out. And then I can pick up some of that burnt sienna and just work that back up from the bottom here and just blend that up. Keeping that little dark area down at the base of the ear. There you go. And work that in. If we look at our reference, you can see that there's a little bit more shadow right from the edge in slightly. So I do want to bring some of that burnt sienna down. It's almost as though it helps to contour the cheek a little more. I'm going to bring that down inward here. So just grabbing some burnt sienna and just working that in. There we go. And I'm going to take this light color and go ahead and hit that down here. This isn't our 
lightest light yet. We're getting there though. And then around the edge, I'm gonna do burnt sienna and just blend that around here. And you can do whatever, you know, if you don't wanna do your Buddha in these colors, you certainly could change up the colors all you wanted to. Go ahead and make sure I'm keeping the chin area down here shadowed. And then on this edge though, I'm going to do a little bit more of the lighter color just on the edge. And bring that in just a little bit. And up here, all this is on this side is gonna be lighter. So I'm coming into that yellow okra white with a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm gonna hit that up here. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the burnt sienna to it. There we go, because I don't want it to be the lightest light yet. I'll put the eyebrow there. It's okay, we got work still to do there. some of that light color here just to refine that circle a little bit okay and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this light color and i'm going to come up and swirl it inside of the medium color so i'm coming in and I'm just making little circles so half circle half circle half circle half circle half circle half circle And then I'm gonna take this color, this light color, and I'm gonna hit it on the bridge of the nose because that is lighter. And a little bit on this side where there may be a little lighter hit to it. And I wanna pick up a little burnt sienna because I wanna make sure that it doesn't get too light on this side. And I'm just blending some burnt sienna to finish filling in a little bit of the nose there. And then I'm gonna take this lighter color and I'm gonna hit the bottom part of the lip and then I'm gonna redefine the top lip here. Just remember it was shaped like a little, a little M. Okay. All right. And that's not our lightest of light, but we're getting ready to get there. And I'm going to go ahead and put you know, this little light color in the center of the eye. And just blend that out to make the eye look like it's got some volume to it. And I'll take some of the burnt sienna. And I'm just going to blend that in there on each side. Oops. A little bit of that burnt sienna down here because make sure I define underneath the chin right here. And then I'm gonna make it more medium as we come in down here a little bit darker than that all right I'm like
liking how that's looking. I'm gonna let it dry and we're gonna come back and put our final little highlights on that. Let's go ahead and clean our brush out so we can work on getting our bamboo in completely. So now we're gonna be switching to our small round brush so that we can go ahead and fill in the rest of the green parts of our bamboo shoots. I'm gonna be taking the phthalo green and my cadmium yellow and a little bit of the phthalo blue and some white. And I'm just mixing a nice medium green. And I'm gonna go along and start to fill in on the side um, that is closest to the, to the Buddha on the edges of the stalks of the bamboo. And I'm just drawing, just this is where I can straighten up my lines. So I'm just drawing a straight line down and I'm gonna continue to do that all the way down. along the edge. And, we'll, and the bamboo can be bumpy. It's not necessarily straight. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some white. And I'm gonna bring it up into this green a little bit. And I'm going to start to work that around the middle to the outer edges of my bamboo. So I'm just bringing that down and I can take my finger and run it down and just blend that. So I've got the middle section that's a little bit more of that medium green and then I still have my edge and I'm going along. And I'm still not doing the, the little parts that are in the middle of each stalk that can have the growth out of it. I'm not doing that just yet. And I'm gonna go along and I'm just gonna take my brush and just make little circular motions just to blend that along. Or you can take your finger as long as it's a clean finger. And then once you've done that, I'm gonna take a little bit more of the cadmium yellow. And I'm gonna bring that down, add a little bit of the titanium white to it and work that into, so I have a dark green, medium green, and now a yellow green that I'm mixing. And I'm gonna bring that to the edge on the side that is away from the Buddha. I do want to make sure that I get right up to the edges of this side. And I'm gonna do that for these other two stalks as well. So starting with the dark green on the side that's closest to the Buddha. And 
and a little bit of the, the middle green color. And it'll go in the middle. And then I'm going to use a yellow green. And then I'm going to move that along in here. And turn that over. And then I'm going to do the third stop the same way. Now where the, this stalk is near this stalk, I'm not gonna put a whole lot of the bright color there. I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit down this way. And even on the underside of the stalk, I'm gonna put a little darker of the green right here. So we know that there's a little bit of a shadow there. There's the dark side. And then I can come back and start here. Get that there. And I'll put some of the medium green right there. So you can see the difference with, with where those two meet. And I'm gonna do something very similar so now for the leaves, I'm going to do something very similar. So the top parts are going to be a brighter color and the bottom parts are going to be a darker. So I'm getting my green with a little bit of the, the blue, white, some of my yellow. And I'm going to start to shape up my leaves now the way I want them. That part's going to be a little brighter. There we go. And then mix that brighter color up there. Then go into the medium green for the middle. Make it a little bit more medium. And 
then the darkest green for the bottom part. And then I'm going to just blend along. And I want to I want to make that top part. I'm going to add a little bit more white to my yellow green. And just make that a little brighter, especially at the very top. There we go. And just blend that down. Go right to the edge. And I'm going to work all the leaves that way, so a little darker. And that, this one's going to be a little bit more shadowed because it's connected with that one. I'm going to make that one a little bit more substantial, I think, that way. I'm going to make it a little brighter. This one's really facing forward, so it may not get too much variation in color. Do a little bit more of that medium green on this side. Make this a little brighter on this side. And then a little darker on this side. I'm actually going to make it overlap that one a little bit. In order to do that, to tell that story, it needs to be a little darker right there. Go. And then blend that out. And then under here, that may be a little darker. And you can put your leaves any way you want. I just wanted to have a few of them that were overlapping. It adds a little bit of interest. All right, so this one is a smaller one. A little darker there. A little in the middle there. And the darker here. So I'm just doing the same process for all of these. It's going to have one side that's a little brighter, depending on where it is. And these at the very top, I'm seeing is getting a little bit more light at the very tops of them. I'm going right up to the edge. There we go. And then I'll do these three down here. Light. 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 And then we'll do the medium green. And then 
since this leaf here is over this, I'm going to put a little area there. That's a, some of that blue and green mix. Just so we, we, that we know there's a shadow underneath that leaf that's being cast onto the bamboo. I'm going to lighten that little area again there. There we go. So we'll get our stems in in just a little bit, but right now I'm going to rinse this brush out and we're going to come back over to work with our small brush on our Buddha. Now with our small round brush, we're going to go ahead and start putting in a few areas that are more bright. So I have my back to my warm palette and I'm going to use my small round brush for this. And I have mixed up some white and some yellow okra with a touch of the sienna in it. I don't want too much sienna. And I'm actually going to add a touch of orange. So it's mostly white with about half as much yellow okra and a touch of burnt sienna and orange. Both orange and burnt sienna are just a little bit. What I'm going to start to do now is I think that my little chin area here, I want it to be a little bit moved over with the bright spots. So I'm going to do that first and we'll come back and work around that in just a minute. And then I want to make sure that I put a little highlight on the side of the circle um, up here. And I'm going to make sure that I, I clean my brush off and I'm just going to blend that a little bit and do that just a little bit more round there. There we go. And I just blended that in just a little. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this color and I'm just going to start to make little half circles on each side of the round parts of the hair. So I'm just doing a little half circle on each side. Little half circle, little half circle. Little half circle, little half circle. And this is just gonna brighten this up a little more. And they don't have to make perfect circles, they can be a little bit more, um, and if, it, if they can be a little bit more open, and if you have a bigger circle, you can actually do a couple of little areas there. It doesn't have to be perfectly shaped to use. It kind of gives it that idea that it may be around something. There's something round here, and there's some depth to it. do a circle and then maybe a half circle in the middle for some of these bigger ones. I'm going to take this light color that I have and I'm just going to sweep a little bit of it on this eyelid here and I'm going to blend that in a little bit of water here and just blend that out a little 
burnt sienna and white. And I'm just gonna work that around the edges of that just to make it blend a little better. There we go. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take this same light color, I'm just highlighting everywhere, I wanna highlight, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work some of that on the edge over here where I think there may be like little bits of light hitting. I'm just gonna put it down and then just blend it in. Put a few, few spots down on these edges and just blend that in. And if you want, you can take a little bit of your burnt sienna and bring it down here to the spot. Maybe even make a little bit more of a lighter section on your eyebrow right on this side where you think maybe some light is hitting that as well. And down here, there may be a little bit more light hitting here. On this side, put a little bit more on this side of the eye. And I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna put it just where you think that upper part of the cheekbone may be and blend that in. Give it just a little lift in the cheekbone there on this side. And then I'm going to take some along the outer edge of the ear. And just blend that over a little bit more. I just wet my brush and I'm just bringing that along the edge. I'm not going to go down too far into the shadow area down here, but just along the outer edge. And then maybe a little bit along here and along the neck area. And I think down in, in, into this little lower area, I need it to be just a little bit more shadowy. So I just picked up a little burnt sienna. I'm mixing in a little bit of that yellow okra. I'm gonna come down here and just work some of that shadow in just a little more here, down in the lower cheek area. And I'm just gonna blend that with my finger. Then I can come over and put that same mix of burnt sienna with a little yellow okra around this little area here. A little bit more burnt sienna here just to give it a little more shadow through here and down into here, just blending that in. And then I'm going to take the lighter color and even a little bit more white into that and just work this little area here around the cheek or the chin and blend that. And we're gonna put a few little highlights on the nose with this as well. So I'm gonna bring it down the bridge of the nose and then I'm gonna blend that in. And you can use a brush to blend in if you want. I just like the finger blending and then I'm gonna follow that around the circular part where the nostril is here on each side. And then I'm gonna take that same highlight color and I'm gonna come up and recreate the top lip. And I'm not outlining it, but I am showing where that lip line will be. And then on each side of the little section that is in the middle that leads down from the nose to the mouth, I'm putting a little bit of that highlight color there as well. And then I'm gonna to start to highlight just in short strokes, the bottom of the lip 
here. And then just blend that in. And I'm gonna do the same thing at the very top of the lip here. You can, can uh, take a little bit of water on your brush. And just give that a little dampness and blend that in a little more. And then take my Bark Sienna and wanna recreate some of the shadow area under the nose. and into the nostrils so I can refine my nostrils a little bit if I want them to be a little more round. Here's where I can do that. And then I can put like a, just a little bit of my, just put a little bit of the Payne's Gray there. I just dotted that in and Make sure I got that paint off my brush. I want to give a little bit of a, really want to kind of have that little part of the nose right at the tip a little brighter. Yellow okra. I'm going to put a little burnt sand in it and just start to work around to make sure that that looks natural and blended. There we go. Maybe a little bit more light hitting on that side. And then right where the corner of the lip is, a little darker with a little burnt sienna. And I'm just going to tap that out. So I'm going to clean up this little line right here just a little bit with my burnt sienna. Just feel like this needs to be a little bit more connected there. There we go. And as you're looking at your Buddha, if there's any other highlights you think you may want to add to it, you certainly can. Now, while I have this lighter color, so this yellow okra, white, and a touch of orange, I'm going to use this color to fill in the little spaces that are on the stalks of my bamboo. And I am trying to make these curve a little bit. And we're going to do that a little bit more when we do the highlight on the outer edge. Now on the side, on this side where we're getting a bit more light, I'm going to add a little white to that mixture. I'm just going to come in and hit that on each side. And then I can just lightly tap it in. Okay, and also while we have this color, this light color, I'm going to get my paint really wet and bring my small round brush to a point. And I want too much paint on the brush. And I'm going to roll it in and I am going to start to come right on the tip of the brush and make these little stems that connect to my 
leaves. Grab mostly white and just come along and just draw a little partial line underneath each of these with my white. Hit the little edges a little bit on this side with that white. And I'm going to take mostly titanium white now. And I'm just going to put a little bit of this white on little areas that make it a little bit more brightness to them. And this is optional, just trying to brighten it up a little bit. And I can go in and even maybe take a little bit of this and hit a, a little dot of it in between each of these. Get a little bit more I might take a little bit of my white, put it with my yellow, and then come up and just hit a few areas to brighten up the tops of these little bamboo leaves. And I may even take some of that bright, bright yellow and hit it a little bit more along the edges at the very tops of my bamboo. As I get lower, not so much, but at the tops. There. So you can go ahead and make any changes, continue to work on your painting in any way that you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and sign it. So I took some white and quinacridone magenta and I made a pink color and I'm going to sign it over here as little as possible. And we are done. Thank you for keeping me company today and I hope you created something special for yourself. Until next time, bye-bye.